Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing cosets and Lagrange's theorem. Okay, so we've now seen the definition of a left and right coset of some subgroup capital H under an element little a. Okay, in this video what we're going to see is a really important property of cosets. Okay, so allow me just to write down the definition of a left and right coset once again, and then I'll show you this really important property that we're going to uh, see in this video. Okay, right, uh, so once again I'll remind you that the left coset of a subgroup capital H under an element little a uh, is equal to the set of all things of the form little a composed with little h, where little h is an element of the subgroup capital H. So basically what this means is go through every single element of the subgroup capital H and left multiply every single element by this element little a, which is some chosen element from the larger group capital G. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the subgroup capital H. Okay, and that's what we mean when we say the left coset of capital H under the element little a. We mean the set of all left multiples of the elements of capital h under the element uh, little a, basically. Okay, uh, then uh, the definition of a right coset of h under a is very much so related. Okay, so it's written capital H little a like so, the right coset of capital H under uh, little a. And here what we do is we switch from left multiplication by the element little a to right multiplication by the element little a. So this is all things of the form little h composed with little a, uh, where little h is an element of capital H. So again, what you do is you go through every single element of this subgroup capital H, and this time you right multiply every single one by little a, and you stick all of those answers that you get into this set, and that is what is meant by the right coset of H under a. Okay, right. So, what then is the great property that we're going to now investigate? Okay, so here is a question. We know that these sets consist of lots of elements, okay, within the larger group, capital G, and we know that one of the elements that will always be within these sets is the element little a itself. So little a will always be in both of these sets, okay? Now, my question is, if we take an element within either one of these cosets, okay, uh, that is not the little a element, so you take some other element within these cosets, and then you generate that element's coset, what coset would you end up with? And my claim is that you end up with the exact same coset. Okay, now to best illustrate what I mean by this, uh, it's best to once again draw a picture of what the coset actually means. So let me uh, redraw out this picture. Okay, so remember we have a nice picture of what a coset actually is uh, in terms of the composition table on the larger group. So here is the larger group's composition table. Okay, and once again I'll mark on the sub-portion that relates to the composition of the elements in capital H. So here, let's say, this portion and this portion, those contain the elements of capital H. So I'll just mark these in red here. Okay, and then this sub-portion of the composition table will then relate to composition of those elements in capital H. Okay, so I'll mark that out. Okay, and now, once again, for the basis of this picture, I'll assume that the little a element that we chose was outside of capital H, so I'll draw it down here. So here is the row corresponding to this element little a, and then we know that what is meant by the left coset of H under a is the sub-portion of the row uh, corresponding to little a, which is underneath this portion corresponding to capital H here. So basically, it means this portion. So you go through every element of capital H, and you left multiply it by the element little a, and you take all the answers that are in this portion here, basically. Okay, whilst the right coset of H under A, in that case what we're doing is right multiplying by the element A, so we don't need the row corresponding to little a, we need the column corresponding to little a, which we'll have over here. Okay, and now what we want is the sub-portion of that column that corresponds to uh, multiplying elements of this subgroup capital H by that element little a, which is, of course is this portion here. So you go through every element of capital H and you right multiply this time by little a, so this means this portion here. Okay, so those are pictures of these left and right cosets of this subgroup capital H under A. 
Okay, so what am I now saying? I'm saying that if you take some other element of the coset here, this coset of H under A, okay, an element other than A itself, so I'm going to take some other arbitrary element, okay, and what would I call an arbitrary element in this left coset of H under A? Well, I've written down the answer. The general form of an element in this left coset of H under A is just A composed with little h here, okay? So here is my arbitrary element of the left coset of h under a. Okay, and basically what I'm saying is if I now generate its left coset, so if I generate a composed with h, which is just an element of the larger group capital G, okay, and I want its coset of h, okay, so its left coset of h, so I'm now looking at the left coset of h under uh, a composed with little h here, this element, so this is now an element, even though it looks more confusing, it is just some element of the group. My claim is that that set is actually exactly the same set as the left coset of h under a. Okay, so in terms of the picture here, what does that mean? That means that if I take this little element, little a composed with h. And remember, if little a was outside of capital H, then we've shown that all of the elements of the coset are outside of capital H. Okay, so this element would also be outside of capital H. So we look at the row corresponding to this element, little a composed with little h here. Okay, and now we're generating its left coset of the subgroup capital H. Okay, so once again, we'll be looking at the sub-portion of the row, this portion here. Okay, and I'll colour that in, in capital, oh, sorry, in purple here, in vivid purple. So this is this left coset of H. And my claim is that these two sets here are exactly the same thing, okay? I, all the entries here will be somewhere within here. Now, I'm not saying, in fact, I'm exactly not saying uh, that um, there'll be underneath one another, i.e. the entry that's here will not be the same entry as is here. But if you look at all the entries in this portion, you will find each and every one of them also in this portion somewhere, okay? They'll be in a different order, but they will all be there. So these two sets will be the same, okay? And the same thing is true for the right coset of H under A, okay? So if I take an element of this right coset of H under A and generate its right coset, Okay, again, that set will be exactly the same. So, basically, if I take an arbitrary element in the right coset of H under A, of course, that will have the form little h composed with little a here, because that's the general form of something in this right coset of H under A. And if I generate that right coset of H, uh, it will be exactly the same as the original right coset of H that I had under the element little a. Okay? So, marking that on this picture, if we now take the column corresponding to the element little h composed with a, which of course we know again will be uh, an element outside of the subgroup capital H, providing little a was outside of the subgroup capital H, okay, and we look at the column dedicated to it, okay, here is the column dedicated to it, and we look at the sub-portion here that corresponds to uh, multiplication by elements in little h, uh, then that will now be the right coset of capital H under this element, little h composed with a. And my claim is, is, again, is that all of the elements in here will be in here at some point. Again, they'll be in a different order, but everything here will be in here, and everything here will be in here. So these two sets are exactly the same, basically. That's my claim. So that's what I now want to show you. In fact, the nice way of saying this is that you can use any element of the coset to generate the same coset, okay? So it's, in a way, the choice of using little a to generate this coset was arbitrary. We could have used any of the elements in this coset to generate that same coset. So all of the elements in here are kind of related to one another, okay? Uh, we could have used any of them, basically, to generate this same coset. Okay, so that's a very nice thing about uh, cosets. So let's try and understand why this is actually true. And quite simply, an understanding of why this is true just comes from having a look at what actually would this left coset of H under this element A composed with little h actually be. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, definition of this. Okay, so this set here 
will be the set containing all things of the form little a composed with little h. Okay, and remember now, uh, it's very important that you understand that little h is fixed this time. Okay, so we have chosen some element of this coset of h under the element little a, okay? And that means that we have fixed this little h, so that's not varying anymore. But now what we're going to do is compose whatever this element is, and this will be some fixed element. Okay, I'm writing it in this strange way, but it is some fixed element of the group. And I'm going to compose it now with every single element of the subgroup capital H. So I have to change my notation now, so I'll make it little h bar now, okay, where little h bar is now the one that you can vary over all elements of the subgroup capital H. So quite simply, all this says is take all the elements of the subgroup capital H and left multiply them now by this element little a composed with little h, basically, which is some fixed element of the subgroup, and specifically it's some fixed element within this left coset of H under a, basically. Okay, right, so why is that set the exact same set as we have here? Well, the reason that it's the exact same set as we have here is because what we can do here is we can rewrite this as little a composed with little h composed with little h bar. Okay, so we're just using associativity there, so for all little h bar is an element of capital H, it is true that this will be equal to this. Okay, so quite simply we can rewrite this set like so. Okay, right. Now, what I want to do is think about this here. Okay, we are letting little h bar here vary over every element of the subgroup, and we are then left multiplying it by some fixed element of the subgroup. Okay, so if we just think for a moment about what this would actually form, if I consider this set, little h composed with little h bar, where little h bar is an element of capital H. Okay, so what I'm saying is consider the set where you go through all the elements of capital H, and this time left multiply them by some other element in that subgroup, capital H, this element little h. Well, of course, that is the left coset of the subgroup, capital H, under the element little h. Okay, but we've already seen that whenever you take a coset uh, of some subgroup under an element of the subgroup itself, that you just end up with the entire subgroup back again, okay, because you're looking here at a row within this restricted composition table, and we know that whenever you look at the row within a composition table of a group, that it has to contain every element of the group once and only once, okay, so effectively we are looking at the row corresponding to this element little h in the composition table on the subgroup capital H, okay, and that must contain all of the elements of capital H, basically. Okay, right, so really, you can forget about the fact that we are actually left multiplying all of these elements of the subgroup by little h. If you consider what this red thing is now varying over, it is still varying over all elements of the subgroup capital H. So if you like, what I can do is I can rewrite this red thing here as little h double bar, maybe, okay? And little h double bar will be varying over all elements of the subgroup. So basically, what I want to do is I want to rewrite this like so. Little a composed with little h double bar now, where little h double bar varies over all elements of capital H. Now, why can I do that? Well, because when I vary little h bar over all elements of capital H, then I know that little h double bar, which is little h composed with little h bar, will also end up varying over all elements of capital H. It will cover them all, okay, because you are looking at this row corresponding to little h in the uh, subgroup capital H. So basically what I'm saying is it doesn't actually matter that you are left multiplying by little h. Yes, it means that when you're going through all of the elements of the subgroup here, you will go through them in a slightly different order because you're now left multiplying them by little h. But you will still end up going through every single element of the subgroup here. You can't not. So you will end up letting every single element of the subgroup 
be positioned in this red slot here. So you will still end up left multiplying every single element of the subgroup by the element little a. Okay, and that's why uh, the set that you end up generating here is exactly the same. Okay, right. So that's the way that you should think about this. We are putting this little h and this little h bar together, basically, and saying, okay, the answer to that still varies over all elements of the subgroup, basically, even though we have uh, left multiplied by this constant in the subgroup, little h here. Okay, right. Uh, and the exact same argument works for the uh, right cosets of h. Uh, as well. Okay, so I'll just go over the argument again to reinforce it in your uh, minds. Okay, right. Uh, so once again, what I want to consider now is uh, what is the right coset of H under this element, little h composed with A. Okay, so now let's have a look at this set in a bit more detail. So this time, what we'll be looking at is the set of all things of the form, uh, little h bar composed with little h composed with little a. Okay, so remember little h is fixed, so this is a fixed element, the element that we're generating the left coset of h, sorry, the right coset of h under. Okay, and now little h bar once again is the variable, so little h bar is going over all elements of capital H here. Okay, right, um, and we're generating that set. So once again, what we can now do is we can use associativity to say that for absolutely every single uh, little h bar that you put here, uh, this thing here will be exactly the same as little h bar composed with little h, and then whatever the answer to that is, composed with a then. Okay, and now we are letting little h bar vary over all elements of capital H, and then before we then right multiply them by the element little a, we are first right multiplying them by this element little h. Now of course that will change all of the elements, little h bar, it will turn them into little h bar composed with little h, but you will still end up going through every element of the subgroup capital H, okay, because quite simply the set consisting of all things of the form little h bar composed with little h, where little h bar can vary over all elements of capital H, that is what we would call the right coset of the subgroup capital H under this element little h, and we know that that contains all elements of the subgroup capital H. That is the column corresponding to this fixed element little h here, okay, and that must contain all elements of the subgroup. So, this thing here basically will still end up varying over all elements of the subgroup. All that the right multiplication by little h does is change the order in which you will actually vary over all elements of the subgroup capital H, but you will still do it basically. So again, what you can imagine doing is just replacing this with a little h bar, and then we can rewrite this expression here basically as a little h double bar, sorry, uh, composed with little a, where little h double bar now can vary over all elements of the subgroup, capital H. Okay, and that then is the reason that it is uh, equal to the right coset of H under A, because that is exactly the definition of the right coset of H under A. So basically, what I have just shown you is that you can use any element of these left and right cosets of H under A to generate it. It didn't have to be that element little a. Little a was an arbitrary element of uh, these cosets, and you could pick whichever element you wanted, basically, and you would have generated the same uh, left and right cosets, basically. Okay, uh, so in the next video, what we will do is we'll look at an example of uh, a coset, okay, and then finally we'll go on to the Grange's theorem.